Hello and welcome to conditional formatting based on another cell in Microsoft Excel. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. So it's relatively straightforward in Microsoft Excel to apply conditional formatting to a cell based on the value of that cell. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply conditional formatting to some cells based on the values in other cells, okay? So let's just go ahead and flip over to Excel. Now, what we're gonna try to do is format this range based on the value of these cells. Okay, so as an example, what would be pretty straightforward is to format this status column based on the status column values. So we would go to conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, equal to, and we would say if the cell value is equal to open, then apply whatever format you want. We're gonna go with green and click OK. That is applying conditional formatting based on the value of those same cells. That's not what we're gonna to try to do here. What we wanna do is apply conditional formatting to this entire range based on the values in the status column. To do that, we're gonna use a different option. We're gonna to go to conditional formatting, new rule, and the key is to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're gonna write a conditional formatting formula in this field, we're gonna pick our format and then we're gonna click OK. But before we unpack this formula, we need to first understand formulas in general, okay? A formula can return a calculated value, and we're probably used to that if we've been working Excel for a while, like you know the sum or average or count. What we wanna do is write a formula that returns a true or false value. If the formula returns true, then it will apply this format. If the formula returns false, it will not apply this format. So let's just kinda of understand what this idea means. I can write a formula like equals, and I can say, does this equal 215? And if I hit enter, the formula returns false. What if I said, does B7 equal 215087? And I hit enter, then I get true. So this is an example of a formula that returns a true or false value. And that's what we're gonna wanna write when we go to write our conditional formatting formula. So the other thing we have to be aware of is what happens if we fill a formula down and to the right? Okay, so as an example, does this equal the word open? Okay, and I hit enter and I get true, and then I fill this formula down, and we should see that this works. So open true, we got a couple of falses for paid, we got a true, bunch of falses, open true. Okay, so this looks like it worked. What happens if I filled this formula to the right? Now we see there's some changes here in our formula results. So let's take a look. When I wrote the formula, I wrote C7, okay? When I filled that formula down, Excel took the liberty of rewriting my cell reference from C7 to C8 to C9 to C10, and that was exactly what we wanted. But when I filled this formula to the right, Excel took the liberty of changing my cell reference of C7 to D7, then to E7, and then to F7. Okay, so what we're trying to do is write one formula that can be filled down and to the right that gives us the correct true or false values for this conditional formatting formula. In other words, we want all of these cells to point to C7. So let's take away all this, let's take away all this, and let's go back and edit this, and let's talk about relative versus absolute references. C7 is a relative reference. That just means as we fill it down or right, Excel is gonna take the liberty of updating the cell reference accordingly. If I want, I can lock down the column reference by putting a dollar sign in front of the column reference. This means if I fill it right, Excel is not gonna change C to D to E. I could also, or put a dollar sign in front of the seven. That's gonna lock down the row reference. That means if I were to fill this down, it's not gonna change the row reference, okay? So as an example, if I hit enter and I fill this down, all of these are gonna be C7, okay? That's what I mean by an absolute reference. Excel is not going to rewrite that cell reference. And that's not exactly what we want. What we really want is an absolute column reference, so as I fill right, Excel won't change the C, 
but a relative row reference. So that as I fill the formula down, it does change seven to eight. So let's see what happens if I fill this down and then I fill this right. Okay, so what we have is all of these formulas are referencing column C, which is exactly what I want. And as I fill the rows down, they are updating to refer to the updated row. Okay, and this is exactly what I want. So imagine this. This is a formula that returns true or false. Okay, and this entire row is referencing column C. And these are referencing column C, column C, all of these are referencing column C. This is exactly the kind of formula we need to write in conditional formatting. Okay, so let's go ahead and clear this out and let's select this range and now let's apply conditional formatting. Conditional formatting, new rule, and let's go with use a formula. So here, what is the formula that we wanna write? Well, the first thing to realize is that when we're writing a normal formula in a cell that computes a cell value, we're writing the formula into the active cell. What's the active cell? Well, we look at this range and we see that although there is an entire range selected, only one of these is the active cell, and that is B7. Okay, and so what we want to do is pretend that we're writing this formula into the active cell, into B7, and that becomes important when we're setting up the cell reference. So we want to say equals, we want to lock down that column reference, so dollar sign C, and then which row reference? Well, it depends on where the active cell is. The active cell is in row seven, so we're gonna use seven. Equals open. Okay, if that formula returns true, then what do we want to apply? Well, we just pick whatever format we want and click OK, and then click OK. And as we can see, we're using conditional formatting to format cells based on the value in another cell, okay? So, can we do multiple conditions? Yeah, we can totally do multiple conditions. So let's cruise over here and let's try it again. Select our range, conditional formatting, new rule, use a formula. We're gonna pretend that we're writing our formula into this active cell. The active cell is B7. So the formula that we want is does C7 equal open? Okay, what if we wanted to add another condition? Well, we would just use the AND function. So now we can string together as many conditions as we want. So does C7 equal open AND is the amount greater than 5,000? So is E7 greater than 5,000? And we could continue stringing along additional conditions if we want. Okay, so if that is true, in other words, if both of those conditions are true, then the AND function returns true, then we wanna go ahead and apply this. And by the way, if we wanted either of them to be true to get the formatting, then instead of and, we would use or. The way that or works is if any of the arguments are true, then or returns true. For and, if all of the arguments are true, then and returns true. So we click OK, and now we got it. Open 5,000, yes. Open 5,000, yes. This is open, it's less than 5,000, so it doesn't get the formatting. Cool, so to recap, to use conditional formatting based on another cell, we need to use a conditional formatting formula. We're gonna pretend that we're writing this formula into the active cell, and that when we click OK, Excel is gonna fill that conditional formatting formula throughout the entire selected range. We're gonna write a formula that returns a true or false value. If it returns true, the format is applied. If it returns false, the format is not applied. And then we need to use our absolute or relative cell references so that it continues to point at the desired column that we want it to look at. Cool? All right. Hey, thanks for checking out that video. If you use Excel often, be sure to check out the seven time hacks video. This is a collection of seven time-saving techniques that I wish I knew years ago. This video is a production of Excel University. 